All right. It is college football week five. I've got 20 off the radar games that we are going to discuss, and I'm going to give you a pick on every single one of them. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right. All right. Let me first tell you, check out Three Dog Thursday. I think everything's going to be good. TJ's down in Tampa. Uh, so we're going to try and go live, and we will see what's going on with the hurricane and all that kind of stuff tomorrow. Uh, but who knows? Who knows indeed? Uh, don't forget the Bet U.S. College Football Show, 1 p.m. every Tuesday and Wednesday. It's 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so we've already done it for this week, but I would certainly appreciate you checking that out. That would uh, that would help me out tremendously. We have a good time over there, but make sure you are subscribed over there. Subscribe on this channel. Like the video. All the good stuff. You guys know what to do. Uh, and on today's show, you guys know how this works. We're going to go through all of these different games very, very quickly. My video is uh, weird. I'm going to have to change a few things around, it looks like, because it's not quite keeping up with how fast I can move. No big deal. We're going to have stats on the screen anyway, so it is what it is. But uh, check out bettingcfb.com. It's 5 bucks a month, 50 bucks for the year. Uh, I do additional content over there. A lot of fun, just silly stuff. I give out my exclusive picks over there, ones that I feel really good about. Uh, that are not tied to a certain time or whatever, and it emails directly to you. Got a lot of people that are already subscribed. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I tried to make it pretty cheap, but uh, but I do have fun with that community. I don't feel as restrained over there. Bettingcfb.com. All right, let's uh, let's dive into it. We are going to have an absolute blast with this. So let's get into the first game. Kentucky visits Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss, a 17.5 point favorite, total of 52.5 on this one. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I've got Ole Miss power rated plus stats. That is, that's my number on it. Ole Miss by 28 in this. Kentucky has trouble scoring. Uh, you look at the Kentucky defense, they should be able to slow down Ole Miss a little bit, but I still think that Ole Miss is going to be able to do basically whatever they want to here. Uh, Ole Miss is number three in PPA per pass. Kentucky's defense is number 50 on this so uh, there's still a, a significant advantage for Ole Miss uh, and then on the other side that Kentucky offense number 117 PPA per pass number 79 PPA per rush when you look at what they're doing when they get down into uh, uh, the opponent's 40 which is a, a scoring opportunity inside the opponent's 40 Kentucky is number 90 at getting inside the opponent's 40 one Ole Miss defends that pretty well they're number 19 and two even when they do get down there Kentucky is number 80. So they're only averaging 3.95 points per scoring opportunity. That is not good. So I, I mean, you almost have to take this. Uh, I was looking to see if I could find a better number. I cannot at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to take Ole Miss minus the 17 and a half. Uh, and I feel pretty good about it. Ole Miss number 10 and five factors plus talent rank. I mean, they are just, they're fantastic. So Ole Miss has, uh, now granted their strength of schedule is garbage and Kentucky has played Georgia thus far, but Ole Miss has got the talent. I feel good about this. So give me, give me Ole Miss. Next on the board, Minnesota heads to Michigan. Michigan, a nine and a half point favorite, total of 36 and a half on this one. And this is interesting. Uh, if you look, I have got, let's see. Let's zoom that bad boy in a little bit, huh? Probably should have done this beforehand. Boom. There we go. All right. So, Michigan, favored by 9.5. Stats model has got them favored by 0.79. The power rating plus stats has got Michigan by 7.5 up here at the top. Minnesota, it, some of their numbers are a little screwy even though they've only faced the number 100 current strength of schedule. Uh, now, my numbers are supposed to be opponent-adjusted, but I don't know if I can opponent-adjust enough to get to that point. So I look at this, the implied score based on the sports book would be 24.5 to 15. I would have it 21.84 to 21.05 just, like, just based on stats. I think that Michigan is going to be able to run the ball on Minnesota. Number 32, PPA per rush for Michigan. Minnesota's defense, number 77 
in PP April Rush Allowed, where I'm highlighting there on the screen. So, uh, rushing success rate allowed, number 42 for Minnesota. Uh, but Minnesota number 90 in rushing explosiveness allowed. You saw last week when they changed up the offense that Michigan can be explosive in the running game against USC, and they certainly were. Uh, Minnesota, not good at offensive line yards allowed, not good at stuff rate. I think Michigan found something, and I think that while this line looks a little bit inflated, I think they win this game by double digits. I don't feel good about Minnesota at all, so give me Michigan minus the 9.5. All right, let's keep it rolling. We've got Baylor and BYU. Baylor at home, a three and a half point home favorite. A uh, total of 45 and a half on this. My number here is Baylor actually plus two. My stats model has BYU by seven and a half. And if you just look at the power rating, I've actually got BYU power rated higher than Baylor. Uh, maybe a 2.2 points there. So when you. It, when you just go pure power rating and you factor in home field, maybe I've got Baylor by half a point just on power rating. Uh, but three and a half is pretty wild. Now, maybe it, this is a, a letdown spot for BYU. Maybe this is a get right spot for Baylor. But it, I also feel like it's a it, it's like a letdown spot for Baylor, too, after the whole disaster that was the Colorado game, right? Uh, you, you look at this Baylor offense, and it is – just abysmal number 119 in ppa uh per drive on offense uh, the defense has been good but they're not great at throwing the ball they only throw it 40 percent of the time and you look at ppa per rush you know they run it almost 60 percent of the time but they're number 101 in predicted points added per rush they're number 104 in rushing success rate they are number 43 in rushing explosiveness against the number 79 rushing explosiveness allowed defense for BYU, so maybe there's a shot there. I don't think Baylor's going to be able to stay ahead of the chains. Standard Downs PPA, they're number 98. They're number 80 in Standard Downs uh, rate. Sorry, Standard Downs success, they're number 102. BYU is number 60 in that spot on defense. And on the other side, while the Baylor defense is pretty good, I still seem to believe that BYU will be able to move the ball some on this defense. Baylor's defense, number 95 and have it created. Uh, I, I don't think BYU is going to uh, let them get to the quarterback, and if he's got time to sit back there and throw, I, I think they're going to be just fine. No, they're not super explosive or anything, but I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be okay. So, uh, when you look at the overall on the teams, BYU number twenty-one in PPA margin, Baylor number seventy-five, and you start to get into like the fundamentals and whatnot, turnover margin. I mean, Baylor is number ninety-four. BYU is number 23. Penalties per game, BYU is better than that. Uh, they're 23 to uh, number 60 for BYU, or for Baylor. Excuse me. Uh, Baylor can't convert once they get inside the red zone. Number 121 in that. I, you, you go with five factors plus talent, everything else, all the things that it takes to win a football game, BYU is better than Baylor. I'm going to take BYU plus the three and a half here. Carrying on. I spent way too long on that. Nebraska heads to Purdue. Purdue, a 10.5 point home dog here. Total of 47.5 on this one. And Nebraska beat at home last week by Illinois. Probably should have won the game. Missed a few field goals, etc. Uh, have not gotten a status update on the kicker, whether or not he's going to be back. But you look at some of these numbers, I don't know that it will necessarily matter because I think Dylan Rayola is going to have a clean pocket um, and we'll go from there. Let's let's just take a look at this. Uh, Purdue's defense is number one sixteen and have it created. They are they're not good against the run, so you know Nebraska is going to try and run the football quite a bit. I would imagine uh, number one thirty three PPA per rush allowed for Purdue's defense. For Nebraska, I mean they're throwing the ball over fifty percent of the time, but. Why would you do that against a Purdue defense that's number 12 in PPA per pass? Now, part of that is the fact that teams are only throwing the ball 30% of the time against them. That's because they don't have to throw the ball. They can run it. 133, that is next to last in PPA allowed per rush. Predicted points added per rush. Uh, stuff rate's not good for Purdue. Number 120, or sorry, number 86. Number 124 in offensive line yards allowed. 
Uh, look, five factors plus talent rank. I've got Nebraska 38. I've got Purdue number 82. This one's fairly simple for me. Go ahead and give me Nebraska. Uh, I found a 10 out there, so give me Nebraska minus 10 on this one. Moving ahead, and we'll write our times down. I've got to pick up the pace. Western Kentucky goes to Boston College. Boston College, a 12-and-a-half point favorite, total of 55-and-a-half. Uh, this one, of course, in BC. Uh, Chestnut Hill, if you will. And looking at some of these numbers, obviously, so 12-and-a-half, that's the best number that's out there. Also, the consensus line right now, it's come down just a touch from 13. Western Kentucky has looked a lot better with Veltkamp at quarterback as opposed to TJ Finley. Uh, I have got Boston College a 16.5 point favorite based on power rating plus stats. Just based on stats, I've got Boston College by 19.5. Uh, power rating, I've got them by uh, about 12.5. And, and now that's before you include home field advantage, which uh, let's say 2.5 points because they don't have to travel, et cetera. So probably 15 points if you just do pure power rating. Uh, so all of those numbers are better than BC. Now, this is a week after the Red Bandana game. Uh, had to come back and beat Michigan State, so maybe it's a bit of a letdown spot. Western Kentucky, uh, they move into conference play after this. Uh, the offensive success rate for Boston College is not great. Uh, not great at all. And they do that the majority of the time. Uh, running the football. Number 100 in PPA per rush, number 112 in rushing success rate, but Western Kentucky's defense isn't exactly good at stopping it. Number 85 and number 81 in those stats for the defense. On the other side, uh, which by the way, Boston College does not throw the ball very often, but they have been really, really good at it. They're number six in PPA predicted points added per pass. On the other side of the ball, um, BC's defense has actually been pretty good. Number 54 PPA per pass, number uh, 33 PPA per rush, and Western Kentucky can't run the ball. And if you're going to be like that, now granted, BC's defense not great at creating havoc, number 112, uh, but I think because Western Kentucky is number 80 in that spot, they might be able to get some pressure on the quarterback if they're not able to run the ball at least a little bit uh, because I think you can bring safeties, you can bring whatever. Uh, points per scoring opportunity, BC's defense does not let you score once you get inside the 40. They're number 28 in that Um and that's fine because Western Kentucky has not been good at doing it anyway. They're number 85 in points per scoring opportunity. On the other side, uh, BC is number 48 in points per scoring opportunity uh, on offense, and the Western Kentucky defense is number 69. So this all leads to BC is better at finishing drives than Western Kentucky. BC has more talent. Uh, I'm going to take Boston College minus the 12 and a half. A lot of favorites thus far. A lot of favorites so far. Uh, let me tell you right quick, don't forget Three Dog Thursday. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That would certainly help things out around here. And, of course, check out bettingcfb.com. We move back into the games. Now, Northern Illinois goes to NC State. NC State is a 6.5-point favorite, total of 46.5. And... A half, and let me tell you, uh, the numbers love Northern Illinois here. They've got Northern Illinois a 1.26 1, uh, 1. point favorite in the power rating plus stats. Just stats alone, Northern Illinois favored by 9. Power rating, I've got NC State favored by, uh, let's call it 2.5, before you include home field advantage. Home field advantage, let's count that 3 points in Raleigh, although I don't know how tuned in the uh, fan base is going to be after the last few weeks um i i look at i like what they did with cj bailey right so we can look at all these numbers if you want to the northern illinois defense has actually looked pretty good uh just based on pure numbers current strength of schedule uh northern illinois is number 26 nc state is number eight uh and nc state just got walloped by Tennessee and by Clemson. Just destroyed. Both of those were away from home. Northern Illinois went on the road, and they beat Notre Dame uh, in a bit of a letdown spot. But regardless, they beat Notre Dame. But they did lose at home last week as a double-digit favorite, almost two-touchdown favorite, uh, against Buffalo. Northern Illinois is number 23 in PPA margin, and NC State is number 96. But the way that that team fought last week when they got down 
a lot. The team was engaged with C.J. Bailey. Uh, they seemed to find something. And call this a gut feeling, because there's not a number that you can come up with here that would make you think that NC State would be able to beat uh, Northern Illinois. But this is a spot that I think NC State is going to uh, show up and get a win. Uh, I think they got too much pride in that program. Give me NC State. The best number I found was six. I think it was a Caesars. But uh, NC State minus six is the way that I'm going on that one. All right. Game number seven. Navy goes to UAB. UAB is a three and a half point home dog. Total of 57 and a half on this. And Power Rating Plus Stats has got UAB uh, as a nine point underdog. The stats model has Navy by 12 and a half. And just pure power rating, before you get into home field, da 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 it's got Navy by six. Navy is a dog here, and I don't get it. Or no, Sorry, Navy's only a three-and-a-half-point favorite, and I don't get it. That feels like that number should be significantly higher. But I guess if you're going by power ratings, if you're giving UAB like two-and-a-half points for home field advantage, the fact that I'm 18.48 on my power rating for Navy and 12.4 for UAB... Um, I mean, let's let's just move it two and a half points, and that would be, yeah, 18.4 to 12.4, that's six. Move it two and a half points, and there's your three and a half, right? Still, I don't like the fact that it's over a field goal, but I think Navy has just been so much better this year. Uh, UAB is running the ball over 50% of the time. I, I don't believe they were doing that last year. Uh, they're pretty good running the football. Number 51 in rushing success rate, Navy number 90 at stopping it. Navy, really good at defending the pass, number 29 in PPA per pass allowed. But on the other side, I mean, you see all that green on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. For you guys on the podcast, UAB is number 122 in PPA allowed per rush. They are number 124 in rushing success rate allowed. Navy is number 8 and number 12 in those. And Navy runs the ball 72% of the time. They are throwing it more, but I don't think they're going to have to this time. I don't, I don't think they're going to have to throw the ball very much. Uh, number 36 to number 99 in five factors plus talent rank. This Navy team, I think, is just significantly better. The only thing that might damage this is the fact that this is a letdown spot for Navy. They had a big win over a ranked Memphis team last week at home, won in an emotional way at the end of the game, got a pick six uh, towards the end of the ball game, uh, less than a minute left in that one. And yeah, man, it was a huge win. UAB, however, this is still the team that went on the road and got dominated by Louisiana Monroe. It feels like a gimme, so gimme. Uh, I'll take Navy, minus the three and a half on that. Game number eight, USF at Tulane. Tulane, a six and a half point favorite, total of 64 and a half on this one. Uh, this one's a noon Eastern time kick, and so we're continuing on in that time slot uh, I've got Tulane favored by 8.2 in this. Now, granted, South Florida has played the number two current strength of schedule, and their numbers look like this because they have played Alabama and Miami. And the final score got a little sideways in both, but they were hanging in the first half in both of those games. Byron Brown, the quarterback for South Florida, a little dinged up last week. Uh, from everything I've seen, he's going to play this week. But if he can't run as well as he has been, he, uh, he has not been able to throw the ball very well. PBA margin, Tulane is number 43 despite playing uh, Kansas State and Oklahoma. And, uh, and they played on the road at Louisiana last week. That was a situational spot that was not kind to them. And yet they won and covered the ball game. South Florida is number 111 in PPA margin. Their, uh, their rushing defense is pretty good. And Tulane's not great at running the ball anyway. They're, uh, they're number 82 in PPA per rush, number 96 in rushing success rate. They are, Tulane is better at throwing the football, but they only do it 40% of the time. I, I like Mensa. I like the freshman quarterback there. Uh, I think he is, I mean, they, I think he's fantastic. Points per scoring opportunity, uh, scoring opportunities per game, et cetera. It, USF doesn't give up a lot of scoring opportunities per game, but when they do, teams always score. They are number 109 in points per scoring opportunity. Now, on offense, uh, South Florida is number 97 in points per scoring opportunity. They just cannot get into the end zone. They settle for field goals a lot. I feel like it, it, this is it's kind of nuts. 
Tulane is number 118 in havoc rate created on defense. I feel like their defensive line is better than that. Now, they have gone against some more talented offensive lines, I'll say that. Um, but this this feels, it, it should be a closer game. But the fact that this thing is under seven, uh, I found a six out there. Give me Tulane. Give me Tulane minus the six. Keeping our theme with the favorites this week. Don't really like betting favorites, but when, when you see a game going one direction, if the number is off, then so be it. So give me Tulane. Wisconsin at USC, and this is game number nine here. We'll uh, we'll try and speed things up. Uh, I am I'm very curious about this. Uh, Wisconsin only a fourteen and a half point dog on the road. Sorry, fifteen and a half point dog total of fifty and a half. And this one, I believe, is going to be the CBS game. It's a two thirty p.m. Central Time game. God's time zone, of course. Uh, looking at this. You know, Wisconsin, number 15, current strength of schedule. That's because they've played Alabama. USC, number 38. That's because they have played LSU and Michigan. Um, I think we know what USC is a little more than we do Wisconsin, although maybe Wisconsin is what we saw against Western Michigan and Alabama, where they just got destroyed. You can look at all these numbers if you want to. Um, The best thing that Wisconsin does is defend the pass, although they are number 81 in PPA per pass allowed but they are number 28 in passing success rate allowed. Part of that is because Alabama does not throw to the middle of the field. They just hit explosives, and when they do, uh, it's pretty it's pretty nuts. Uh, Wisconsin, number 28 in passing explosiveness allowed, but you saw that you got the athletes, you can get over the top of that defense very easily. Ryan Williams uh, did that, and so did Jeremy Bernard. So uh, passing explosiveness for USC is number 65, but they've got the athletes to be able to uh, to get past that that secondary running the ball USC only runs the ball 36% of the time but they're number 24 in PPA per rush number 8 in rushing success rate uh, they're number 9 in offensive line yards they'll they'll be able to do what they want to on offense as far as the defense is concerned they're not great at stopping the run so that's something to be a little bit concerned about number 92 in PPA per rush they're not great at stopping rushing explosiveness however Wisconsin is not great at generating it they're number 120 in that on offense uh, offensive line yard stuff rate, uh, very, very similar on that. I don't think Wisconsin is going to be able to keep up in this game. I don't trust Braden Locke to be able to do that. My number on this is USC minus 15 and a half. The stats model has it USC minus 18 and a half. I could not find. Uh, no, I found a USC minus 15. So I will take USC minus 15 on this game. All right. We carry on. Arkansas visits Jerry World, and they're going to take on Texas A&M. They have not had a whole lot of success against the Aggies, even as bad as the Aggies have been. Uh, But Texas A&M, a a a 3.5 point favorite, total of 51.5 on this. Oh, yes. My stats model has Arkansas favored by 2. My power rating plus stats has A&M favored by 2.8. And... The power rating, just on a neutral because that's exactly where this is, it's got A&M by two and a half. Uh, this thing is three and a half. You can get a four out there if you want to, or you can get a three out there. There's This thing is all over the map, all over the map. I think that Reed is a better quarterback, but they stated this week it looks like Connor Wigman is going to be QB1 this week, and I think that that actually hurts Texas A&M. A&M's numbers are inflated a bit because they went and just destroyed a bad Florida team Arkansas uh, got outgained against Auburn, but they were able to, well, you, you'll see this, their turnover margin uh, improved drastically this past week after the Oklahoma State game, where they just, I mean, they were giving the ball away all the time. They were number 86, or are number 86 in giveaways per game at one and a half turnovers per game. They were number 29 in takeaways per game. Part of that is because Auburn uh, threw them the football four times last week. Uh A&M is pretty good at not giving it away. They're number 26, so 0.75 giveaways per game. I'm 
intrigued in this game. I think that Arkansas can generate enough offense. They're number 17 in PPA per rush, number 13 in rushing success rate, uh, and they're number 34 in rushing explosiveness, which A&M is number 125 at defending rushing explosives. I think, I think that A&M's offense is tricky enough with Bobby Petrino that they are going to be able to generate some big things. They're number 39 in passing explosiveness. A&M is number 52 at defending it. I think Elko will be able to slow them down some, but I think that Arkansas will be able to generate enough big plays that they're going to be able to get into the end zone some. And I think this is a tight, tight ball game. I think there's a strong chance that Arkansas wins the game outright. Uh, they seem to have a lot of belief here. So I'm going to take Arkansas with the four on this. Give me the Razorbacks, plus four on that one. All right, right quick. Tickets are ridiculously expensive, and I'm sure you guys have heard this ad if you listen to the show, but i got to keep telling you because it's important. you got to save some money right now. And we got an election coming up. We're trying to save money anyway. Inflation has always been bananas. Uh, save money wherever you can. If you want to go to a show, a concert, one of these gigantic games that's coming up, Alabama, Georgia's this weekend, Red River's coming up. Uh, Tennessee, Georgia is coming up later on in the year. If you want to go down to Oxford and see Ole Miss play against Georgia, you can do that. There's a ton of huge games, and they all cost an arm and a leg to get into. Use the promo codes WCE10, that's WCE10, and that is going to get you 10% off, or sorry, 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more. WCE20 is going to get you 20 bucks off an order of $300 or more, and it's not a one time thing. You can do it every single time that you order tickets through Ticket Smarter. Very easy to do. Ticketsmarter.com is the place to go. They are widely trusted. I've used them. I had a great experience. Uh, Their customer service works great with you. I I highly recommend these guys. Use the promo code WCE10 or WCE20. Think smarter. Ticket smarter. Easy enough, right? Easy enough. Like the video. (laughs) Like the video for me. I appreciate you guys. All right. We move on. And we are going to the Big 12. TCU visits Kansas this week. Kansas on a three-game losing streak, and they had a better than 70% win percentage in all of them. Sorry, better than 70% post-game win expectancy in all of those games. And the reason why they are losing is because they are number 127 in turnover margin. Now, TCU is number 108. So that's not great. They're number 100 in giveaways per game, number 107 in takeaways per game. Kansas is number 126 in giveaways per game. It's it's almost like you can bank on it with Jalen Daniels now. Uh, You can trick him into giving you the football. They are number 86 in PPA per pass, number 104 in pass rate. So they're only throwing the ball 43% of the time. However, they are number 40 in passing success rate. Easiest way to tell this, they are number 100 in scoring opportunities per game. They are number 13 in points per scoring opportunity. So when they get down there, they're actually getting the ball in the end zone. It's just that they're not getting there very often because they're putting their defense in a terrible position by giving the ball to the other team so much. So uh, on the other side, TCU, they are number seven in scoring opportunities per game, but they are number 77 in points per scoring opportunity. That is not good. Uh, Of course, Kansas isn't great at defending it. They're number 68, but that's still better than 77th, obviously. So uh, this is a... Tricky game, but I I trust like it, it's strength on strength. Really, TCU can't run the ball. They are number one twenty eight, but they don't even try to. They're number one twenty nine in uh, rush rate, so only running the ball about thirty six percent of the time. Number one thirty three in rushing explosiveness, but they can throw the ball. They're throwing the ball sixty four percent of the time. They're number fifteen in PPA per pass. Number thirty in passing success rate. Uh, they don't allow a lot of havoc. That's certainly good. Kansas's defense, though, is number 27 in PPA per pass. You look at these, uh, the five factors plus talent rank, TCU is more talented than Kansas. I There's something, Parker said it best, right? He tweeted out last week that Jeff Grimes will have to answer for what he has done to Jalen Daniels, and they're just not scheming guys open as easily anymore. So the fact that this is Kansas minus one and a half, I'm going the opposite direction. Uh, Give me TCU plus the two. I think they win the game outright. Uh, There is a two out there, so I'm taking that one. TCU plus two on that. Now, game number 12 here. And again, write our time down and don't spend as long on the games, Gary. Oklahoma heads to Auburn. 
And Auburn, a two and a half point home dog, total of 45 and a half on this. And you can get, uh, I think you can get a three, you can get a two as well, depending on which direction you want to go with this. My stats model has Oklahoma by 10.99. My power rating plus stats has Oklahoma by 5.83. Just pure power rating. Uh, before you get into home field, uh, it's got Oklahoma by about three points. So you give them three points for home field at Auburn, Jordan Hare. And um, yeah, I, I'm curious what the mindset is for Auburn because, I mean, you see the numbers. They're number 19 in PPA margin. They are number 37 in offensive PPA per drive. The defense is actually pretty good. Oklahoma's defense is uh, slightly better. Oklahoma's offense is atrocious. But Michael Hawkins Jr., uh, I like what I saw out of them. You you could see that spark with the team whenever you saw him come in. All the rumors were that he was fantastic at practice, and then he finally got into the game, and he was awesome. So uh, Auburn's turnover margin is number 132. They average negative 2.5 turnovers per game. They're giving the ball away three and a half times per game at least. That is insane. Um, just insane penalties per game like Oklahoma doesn't give it away much but they do get a lot of takeaways uh so they're number three in turnover margin I think that that's where this plays out the five factors plus talent rank Oklahoma's number 26 Auburn is number 54 Auburn is not the most efficient uh when it comes to well everything right (laughs) they're not the most efficient uh they're number 61 in points per scoring opportunity Oklahoma's defense is number 45. On the other side, Oklahoma can finish drives. They're number 58 in points per scoring opportunity. Auburn's defense is number 20. But Auburn's defense also gives up. I mean, they're number 92, so they give up 5.75 drives per game that get inside the opponent uh, 40-yard line. So I I look at this. I don't think two points is enough. I'm going to take Oklahoma minus the two. I feel uh, fairly strong about that. We go down to Austin. Mississippi State visits the Texas Longhorns. Texas, a 38-and-a-half point home favorite, total of 62-and-a-half. And I don't remember the kid's name, uh, but Blake Shapin is out. So we will we'll have to see exactly what the backup's name is. Uh, Van Buren or something, I believe it was. Here, we got it right here. Uh, Michael Van Buren Jr. There we go. And he's a freshman. He was 7 of 13 for 100 yards passing, no touchdowns, no interceptions last week. Blake Shapin was actually pretty good. Eight touchdowns, one interception uh, as a as a starting quarterback, and he was 68.5%, had almost 1,000 yards already, and that's for a bad Mississippi State team. The stats have got Texas favored by 47.66. Uh, my power rating plus stats has Texas by 37. I think losing Shapin is way bigger than that. Um the, the Mississippi State defense is putrid, putrid, and Texas has shown that they do not mind stepping on somebody's throat. It's the first SEC game at home for Texas. I, I think they're going to go out and kind of prove a point here. Number two in five factors plus talent to number 89. We, we don't have to spend long on this. Let's, let's go and wrap this thing up. Uh, I'll take Texas minus the 38 and a half. I don't necessarily like that number, especially that hook. Uh, But that is the best number that you can get right now because, I mean, there's still 39s and whatnot if you feel like taking state. But I don't feel strongly about it uh, by any stretch of the imagination. The implied score at the sportsbooks is 49 to 11.5. I don't know if state gets to 10. I don't know. I I don't think they get over 10. So I'm, yeah, this is going to be rough. We move along in the action, and we're doing a Sun Belt versus... There's my time. We've got a Sun Belt versus Mac game, and the Mac team is favored by eight and a half. Bowling Green at home, minus eight and a half, total of 51 and a half against Old Dominion. And this one's tricky. Uh, Bowling Green played at Texas A&M last week, and Bowling Green has not won a game in uh, damn near a month. It's been a while. Uh, this Old Dominion defense is feisty. Number 63 in PPA allowed per drive, number 59 PPA allowed per play, but their offense just can't get very much going. Bowling Green, on the other hand, number 31 in offensive PPA per drive, but they're number 118 in defensive PPA per drive allowed. 
Uh, strength of schedule, Old Dominion number 69, Bowling Green is number 13. Well, that's because Bowling Green played Penn State and Texas A&M both on the road, and they hung to within a touchdown of both of them. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot because you come back home, it, that defense, like I said, number 98 PPA per rush allowed, number 115 in PPA per pass allowed, but Old Dominion can't really do anything with it, right? That's that's where it gets a little tricky. Uh, but you're looking at five factors plus talent. Bowling Green, number 107, and Old Dominion, number 125. I mean, Old Dominion did hold up pretty well against South Carolina. I, I think that this is the kind of game that if you're Bowling Green, you can kind of overlook it a little bit. It's still non-conference. It's not a MAC game. I've got Bowling Green stats-wise favored by 6.65. Uh, stats plus power rating, I've got Bowling Green by 7.7. You, you would not believe this, but this number is all over the place. And I believe at DraftKings, you can get Old Dominion plus 10. I think that's where it is. Uh, so I'm going to take the 10. I, I think, like, I like Bowling Green to win the MAC. I think that Old Dominion can hang around in this game. I think the pace of play will certainly uh, be part of that. Let's see, plays per game. Yeah, Bowling Green number 115 in plays per game. Old Dominion is number 62. Now, Old Dominion's defense is dead last in giving up offensive plays, but a lot of that has to do with who they've played, etc. So, uh, Bowling Green, they're not going to play fast. I don't think there's enough to get separation here, especially by double digits. So, I'll take Old Dominion plus the 10 on that one. Moving on to game at number 15. And we move to the Big Ten. Ohio State heads to Michigan State. Michigan State, a 23.5 point home dog here. 48 and a half is the total. And I, the Ohio State current strength of schedule is number 131. Michigan State has played some decent teams already. They played Maryland. They played Boston College already. Um, last week took their first loss. That was uh, a bit surprising. Um, yeah, they're three and one overall. They are two and two against the spread. And Ohio State three and zero, but they're one and two against the spread, and that's because they had. I mean, their line against Akron was fifty. I mean, what are we talking about? And they won the game fifty-two to six. It was never in doubt. Ohio State is number one in PPA margin. They're number eight in offensive PPA per drive. Number one in defensive PPA per drive. Aiden Childs turns the ball over a lot right now, uh, and they are just. They're trying to be aggressive. Uh, you look at their offensive numbers, they are, you know, almost perfectly balanced, 50-50, running the ball, passing the ball, but they're number 69 in PPA per pass, number 96 in PPA per rush. Um, anything that they do on offense, Ohio State is better at defending it. Now, part of that might be because of who Ohio State has played, but I really think it's just because of how ridiculously good that Ohio State talent is. Uh, Michigan State just does not have the talent here to be able to compete. And I started looking at numbers and whatnot. This opened at Ohio State 24.5. It's down to 23.5. Um, the total was 49.5. It's down to 48.5. I trust Ohio State is going to be able to score enough points here, whether it's through defensive scores, whether it's through special teams, etc. cetera. Uh, I don't believe in... Michigan State's ability to stop them. Now, Michigan State, number 10 in points per scoring opportunity. Ohio State is number six, though. And who are you going to trust when you get down there in the red zone? I'll take Ohio State's offense all day, every day. All day, every day. Chip Kelly knows how to get into the end zone. Uh, rushing success rate, et cetera. That's all Ohio State. They're number one in PPA per rush, number one in rushing success rate. When I mean, you got those two backs, and the offensive line has been better than I thought it would be. Um, but yeah, the, the things that drive me nuts about Michigan State, number 120 in penalties per game. Uh, they're number 131 in penalty yardage per game. It, yeah, I mean, it's 91 hidden yards for Michigan State every single game. Uh, Ohio State is number 61, 52 penalty yards per game. So it is it is what it is. Uh, I, I feel strong about this. Give me Ohio State minus 23 and a half on that one. Uh, let me tell you right quick. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to check out bettingcfb.com. Three Dog Thursday is coming up tomorrow, and don't forget the Bet U.S. College football show. 1 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday and Wednesday. There's a link in the description. You can get subscribed over there. All right. We carry on, and we're moving to game number 16, and we're writing down our times because 
We're doing okay on time. Not too shabby. Stanford goes to Clemson. Stanford got a walk-off win, long field goal against Syracuse last week. Feeling good about themselves. And this week, they have to go to Death Valley. They got to go to Memorial Stadium. Clemson has played a stronger strength of schedule thus far. They absolutely walloped NC State last week. The offense for Clemson is looking pretty good. Uh, Number 12 in PPA per pass, number 3 in PPA per rush. Uh, My number on this has Clemson, stats-wise, has Clemson minus 22. And power rating has got Clemson minus 19.5. Now, power rating-wise, I've got Clemson number 13. I've got uh, Stanford number 75. I've got Clemson favored by like 15 in power rating. So nothing too crazy. Uh, And if you want to throw in home field advantage, hell, we can give them three and a half points. And it would still only get me up to, you know, 18 and a half, uh, maybe 19 if you you add four. It just kind of depends. Um, But none of of my numbers are at 22 and a half or 21 and a half. So, yeah, the stats model is at 22. Uh, Look, there is a 22 and a half out there. So, and I'll... I like to tell you what book, but but I can't necessarily do that right this second. Uh, but I wrote it down. I know we got it. I know we got it because I went and found the best numbers for these books. Um, there we go. All right, let's find it. Uh, looking at those numbers, though, here we'll scroll down so that you can see the the Clemson defense is not great at stopping the pass. Uh, Ao Manor. We'll certainly be able to. Uh... Okay, we've changed. All right, so DraftKings has twenty-two. We'll take twenty-two on that with Stanford. So, you you can tell which direction I'm going here because I'm going to take Stanford in the spot uh, because this is a look ahead. As ridiculous as it sounds, I think Clemson is looking ahead to that Florida State game, and I think they want to embarrass them. At least that's what I'm feeling. Uh, the five factors plus talent rank Clemson just number thirty to number seventy-two. So Clemson, that Georgia game weighing heavily here, uh, They it, Clemson's defense, number 126 in points per scoring opportunity, they don't allow a lot of teams to get down there. They're number, well, I take that back. They do allow a lot of uh, scoring opportunities per game, and they give up a, a bunch of points, almost five points per scoring opportunity, so they're giving up touchdowns. Uh, defensive red zone appearances per game, number 119, they're giving up 4.33. Their defensive red zone touchdown rate is number 102. So six, over 69% of the time when a team gets into the red zone, they're scoring a touchdown. That is insane. Um, Stanford is not great at it. They're 53% on offensive red zone touchdown rate. I think that Clemson is going to let Stanford hang around in this game. I think that Troy Taylor, the Stanford head coach, is going to run the ball enough, and I think that A.O. Manor is going to have enough success against that secondary that they'll just hang around. I don't think Clemson is too worried about running Stanford out of the building. I think that's what they want to do to Florida State next week. So give me Stanford plus the 22 on that. Moving ahead, writer times down, and I spent too long on that one. Of course I did. Middle Tennessee goes to Memphis. Memphis a 25.5 point favorite, total of 61.5. First off, uh, my number on here, projected total is 55.11. I think we're probably going to get an over in this. Uh, and that that's if the weather doesn't end up. There's a chance that the remnants of Helene could be here, but we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Because uh, this one is a, uh, let's see, 7.30 p.m. Yeah, 8, 8.30 p.m. kick. 8.30 Eastern, whatever it is. So, if it's here, then, yeah, that might slow things down a little bit. Middle Tennessee is terrible. They are absolutely terrible. Memphis could even hit this over by themselves or get very close to it, but also don't trust the Memphis defense very much, even though uh, last week their numbers looked pretty good, and then they ran up against Navy, and Navy just split them apart. Now, the 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 Middle Tennessee rushing offense, one, they only run the ball 42% of the time, but they're number 131 in rushing success rate, number 106 in PPA per rush. They are number 19 in rushing explosiveness, so they might be able to break a run here or there, uh, especially against uh, Memphis, who is number 127 in rushing explosiveness allowed. Uh, 
part of that is because Navy gashed them. Gashed them. They could not tackle Navy. Uh, couldn't figure out where the ball was a lot of times. Middle Tennessee, number 127 in turnover margin. Uh, I, I look at this, and I think Memphis is going to score a ton of points. They're going to be pissed off about last week. Uh, this is a, a big spot for the Tigers. Let's make it simple. Uh, I found a 25 out there, and I'll be able to tell you where it is momentarily. Uh, 25. Eh, all of these are at 25 and a half. I may not be able to. I may not be able to find one for you. Eh, they're all 25s and halves now. Okay. So we'll write that down. Memphis minus 25 and a half. I don't think it matters. I think they win by at least four touchdowns. I feel pretty good about it. I'm going against my stats model, um, which is Memphis minus 23. But power rating plus stats, I've got Memphis minus 26 and a half. I think they win by at least 28. And so give me Memphis to cover this one. And we got three more. Game number 18 here. Da, 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 da. All right. I was told that I talk slow. I don't feel like I do. I think when I get going, I talk fast. Uh, but it takes me a minute to like actually get into the groove. So, regardless. SEC versus Sunbelt game in Baton Rouge. And I've heard that you cannot say that as just Baton Rouge. You have to put the accent on it. So, Baton Rouge is where the Tigers of LSU are going to be hosting the South Alabama Jaguars. And LSU favored by 21.5. Total of 65.5 on this one. And... Go ahead and pull up what our best number is on that. Yeah, I see what I got here. Okay, so this LSU offense is legit. The South Alabama defense can't stop the pass. They're number 103 in PPA per pass allowed. Uh, LSU is number 11 in passing success rate. South Alabama number 124. But when it comes to running the ball, which LSU is only doing about 30, yeah, we'll say 38% of the time, um, that's what South Alabama is good at defending they can actually stop the run. They're number 24 in rushing success rate allowed, number 45 in PPA per rush, but LSU wants to throw the ball. They want to get it to their athletes, and South Alabama cannot stop that. Now, South Alabama is number 16 in PPA margin right now, partially because their offense is so good. So we'll get down here. This LSU defense is still garbage. They are still trash. I mean, it's absurd. Blake Baker came in, and nothing looks different. Now, part of this might be the fact that the secondary is not very good because they, they keep having to bring in transfers and whatnot. They haven't been able to develop a secondary yet. And when it comes to, you know, the defensive line and whatnot, I, I don't feel strongly about that. Now you don't have Harold Perkins. Not that he is worth a ton anyway. He only had one and a half tackles for loss on the season. Uh, and it's not like they've played the best of competition, right? But you look at this and, you know, both teams, penalties per game, number 103, number 107 is what it is. Uh PPA per pass on defense for LSU is number 111. Uh, they are number 119 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, South Alabama is number 19 and number 15 in those passing. As far as running the ball, South Alabama number 5 PPA per rush, number 3 in rushing success rate, and they can be explosive in uh, running the football, number 21. Gio Lopez, the quarterback for South Alabama, is legit. He's awesome. He can throw it. He can run it. Uh, whatever you want to give up to him, that's what he's going to do. So uh, when it comes to this number, which is, it, you know, LSU was favored by 24, 24 and a half against UCLA, and then that number came crashing down to 21, and then UCLA still covered. South Alabama, actually pretty good. Now, granted, their current strength of schedule is kind of garbage. They're number 128. I, I think LSU puts up plenty of points here, but I also believe that South Alabama puts up some points, and I think that... The number that I got here is 22 and a half. Uh, you can get a 22 and a half at. Da, 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 da. Well, where is this? Bet MGM. So 22 and a half. I will take South Alabama to keep within three touchdowns here, uh, or keep it to around three touchdowns, uh, because I think that South Alabama is going to put some points on the board. All right, we move on. Two more games. And. Cincinnati goes to Texas Tech, and I am getting roasted by Texas Tech fans because I picked against them last week against Arizona State, and I apologize. Like, <laughs> I'm just picking ball games, guys. I don't have any vendetta here. Uh, but look, at Stats Model has Cincinnati favored by five. 
Power rating plus stats has got Texas Tech favored by half a point, not even half a point, point two three points in this. I, Texas Tech is favored by two and a half in this game. 59 and a half is the total. It opened at three and a half. It's come down to two and a half. Uh, there are still some threes out there. So I was able to get one of those with Cincinnati. And I say that, but I've recorded this too late. And now there's only two and a halves. Boy, that just sucks. That just sucks. Okay. So let's write it down. I like Cincy here. Uh, I think Cincy, their offense is really good at throwing the ball. Brendan Soresby has been an absolute magician with the football, with this offense. Uh, they're not able to run it great, but they run it enough, right? They're only running 48% of the time, but they're number 69 in PPA per rush. Well, Texas Tech's defense is number 76 in that uh, rushing success rate. Cincy is number 59, and Texas Tech is number 80. Rushing explosiveness, Texas Tech number 105. I... It is what it is, right? It's Cincy not great at points per scoring opportunity, but they get down there enough. It is what it is. On the other side, uh, Texas Tech, number 32 in PPA per pass. Uh, Morin is... Is it Morin? Boy, I'm, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Uh, a lot of information going in and out of this brain this week. Uh, really every week during the football season because I'm talking about 134 different teams. Like it's bananas. Uh, Marin, Yes. Marin is the quarterback's name for Texas Tech. Okay, anyway, number 32 in PPA per pass. Well, since his defense is number 66, on the other side, running the ball, Texas Tech has not been great. Now, that might get alleviated because Brooks is back, uh, but they're number 87 in PPA per rush. A lot of this has to do with the offensive line. So they're number 60 in offensive line yards, number 94 in stuff rate allowed. Well, since he isn't great at either one of those either. So I think both teams are going to be able to score here. I I feel strongly about this. Since he does not let teams score once they get into scoring position, uh, Texas Tech's number 22 at finishing drives, and Cincinnati is number 15 at defending it. So you might see some field goals, stuff like that. I uh, I feel fairly strongly about that. Texas Tech, number 128 in penalties per game. Uh, they are number 115 in penalty yards per game, so 76.8 hidden yards that they are missing per game. Uh, Cincinnati is number... 23 in penalties per game, only 4.8, so 42.3 penalty yards per game. That's number 32 in the country. There are some things fundamentally that I feel like Cincinnati does a little bit better. Cincy is number 42 in five factors plus talent, and Texas Tech is number 51. So I think that Cincy is a bit more efficient. Scott Satterfield, revenge tour. Um, I will take Cincy plus the two and a half. Texas Tech fans, don't kill me on this. I'm just making a pick on the game based on the stats. Your team put up these stats. Damn it. <laughs> Last game of the day, and we've got Arizona going to Utah. And, of course, I had to write my time down. But last game, we've got Arizona going to, Sto uh, not Stillwater, uh, Salt Lake City. Utah played in Stillwater last week. Uh, Utah, an 11.5 point favorite, total of 48.5 on this one. And my stats model has Utah favored by 17.74. My power rating plus stats has got Utah favored by 13 and a half. And yes, it might be a bit of a letdown spot after Utah just went and dominated uh, Oklahoma State last week. Gave up a couple of late scores in garbage time, but at the end of the day, you knew who was winning that football game. Uh, got a little hairy at the very end of the game, but it is what it is. Uh, Utah's offense, number 73 in PPA per pass, number 77 in PPA per rush. Who knows if we're going to see Cam Rising again. If if we see Cam Rising, this number is going to jump well, well above 11.5. I think it's probably going to be the Wilson kid again, and I think he's just fine. Like They're running the ball nearly 57% of the time, but Arizona's defense is not good. They're number 92 in PPA allowed per drive, number 92 in PPA allowed per play. Um, they are number 75 in defensive success rate. Well, Utah's defense is number 5, and... Even with Arizona's offense having a few good things going their way, Noah Fafita can still throw the football, but they're not successful with it. They're number 111 in PPA per pass. Or sorry, number 111 in PP. Number 111 in passing success rate. You can tell it's been a long week. Um, but yeah, number 111 in uh, in passing success rate. They are number 46 in PPA per rush, number 71 in passing or in rushing success rate. But Utah is better than them at all of this. Arizona can't finish drives? Well, they definitely wouldn't be able to do it against Utah because Utah is number 16 in points per scoring opportunity allowed. 
Uh, you, you look at the five factors plus talent rank, Utah is number seven. That's how efficient this team is. Incredibly efficient. Um, Arizona is number 79 in that metric. I don't think 11 and a half is enough. I, I don't I don't think it's nearly enough. Uh, so I am going to... Yeah, I'm going to take Utah. There is an 11 out there that I wrote down, but let's see if it's moved any. Um, yes, there is an 11, and it is at Caesars. So... Uh, well, Caesars and DraftKings. There you go. There's also a 12 out there if you wanted to take Arizona. Uh, but you can get that at Bet Rivers. Yeah, just Bet Rivers. And so, but yeah, you shop around for your lines. Shop around for your lines. All right. Let's, uh, let's toss up the screen. And let's go ahead and do our recap and keep this thing under an hour. All right, our recap. Ole Miss minus 17 and a half, Michigan minus nine and a half, BYU plus three and a half, Nebraska minus 10, Boston College minus 12 and a half, NC State uh, minus six, Navy minus three and a half, Tulane minus six, USC minus 15, Arkansas plus four, TCU plus two, Oklahoma minus two, Texas minus 38 and a half, Old Dominion plus 10, Ohio State minus 23 and a half, Stanford plus 22. Memphis minus 25 and a half, South Alabama plus 22 and a half, Cincy plus three and a half, or two and a half, excuse me, and Utah minus 11. That is how we're rolling. Don't forget, bettingcfb.com is where you can become a member. Five bucks a month, 50 bucks for the year. I give out plays over there. We're 18 and 12 thus far on the season. Went five and two last year, starting to get a grip on things. Feeling pretty good about uh, about myself right now. Uh, three Dog Thursday, of course, coming up on Thursday, God willing. We'll see how things are going with the hurricane with TJ. Uh, of course, the Bet US College Football Show. Every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. There is a link in the description for that one. And don't forget about Ticket Smarter. Ticket Smarter. And uh, we're going to start doing some stuff with uh, Ghost Sleeve. Ghost Sleeve is a, a fun company. And uh, and actually, now that I'm looking at it, yeah, we're... Uh, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Uh, we're, we're going to start working with a new company called, I believe, Wonderfan. So we got things on the horizon here. Things on the horizon. All right, with that said, let's get out of here. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football. And hopefully, hopefully, all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question... You can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.